has seen a major increase in animal to human transmitted diseases in the past decade. That's according to the World Health Organization. Well, in an analysis released this week, the organization says that Ebola constitutes 70% of these zoonotic infections, while monkeypox and other diseases comprise of 30%. So let's discuss this further now with the University of Pretoria's veterinary science tropical diseases professor, Lucille Bloomberg. Professor Lucille, thank you so much for your time this morning. But maybe let's start off with the basics, right? When we're speaking about zoonotic um, diseases, exactly what are we referring to? Does that mean that it's actually got its origins from animals? Exactly right. So it could be a bacteria, a virus, a parasite. It has its origins in, a, in an animal, a, a, non, uh, a vertebrate animal, and uh, it jumps uh, species to humans in, in many ways. And Ebola is a perfect example. So it would be monkeypox. I mean, you know, when, you, when you're thinking animal to human uh, transmitted diseases, one thing that would come to mind would, would be something like rabies, you know, from, from dogs. You wouldn't expect, you know, there to be these essentially life-threatening and incredibly dangerous diseases like Ebola, like monkeypox, that would be transmittable to human beings. But are there any animal, are there rather any kinds of diseases that animals uh, contract that are not transferable to humans? So um, you mentioned rabies. And I think rabies is, um, yeah, I think rabies is our, uh, a huge problem at the moment, and it's um, it's 100% fatal, but it is preventable. Oh. And um, I think what's really important about these zoonotic diseases is to deal with them in a one health way. So we bring in animal specialists, environmental specialists, human health specialists, and work together to tackle them. I mean, we're talking here about working together to tackle them, but one would actually have to wonder, why do we experience this increase? I think is it a 68% or so increase in zoonotic diseases. What has been the reason for us actually being able to see this? Because one has to wonder, how is it that it starts from the animal and then it filters down to the human host? What has happened over the past decade from, let's say, 2012, Professor Lucille, that has allowed for this reality to take place, this conversation to take place when we're looking at that 68% increase? Yeah. So um, many of these uh, diseases, monkeypox, Ebola, are in deep forested areas. Uh, monkeypox is in West Africa, East, uh, Central Africa, around rainforests. And people are increasingly traveling, uh, moving into these areas, often in search of food. Um, they then move out, um, they move to uh, across the country, and often the products move even internationally. So there's been definitely uh, more move into these deep areas where people didn't used to go. So that increases the, the chances of contact. Um, and there's, I guess, an increased um, international or national trade in many of these wildlife species. Um, yeah, so I think those would really be important uh, reasons. More contact. Prof, when you're picking up a case of monkeypox, in you know uh, urban areas in Johannesburg and in, in Cape Town and in, in Durban, and you're picking them up in, in places like New York and and London and such. Is it because they come from you know those areas of those forestry areas, those those deep lying areas, as you say, where people are going in search of food, or is it very is it normal for a case to just pop up in urban areas, knowing very well you know as you yeah. say where it's most prevalent? No, so they're not um, just popping up. They, um, they do come, the, um, we have very good molecular methods looking at fingerprints of organisms and the current monkeypox outbreak is most related to um, the, uh, the monkeypox that's seen in West Africa. Mm. So there was obviously travel from West Africa um, in, a, in a human to, uh, to, to other countries. Then there was very close contact um, and uh, so the spread happened. But we don't have monkeypox naturally in animals in London or here. So it's people moving mm. and contact with infected people. Yeah. How does the contact happen with the animal in order for this disease or the virus to be passed down? I mean, so for example, like rabies, would it have to be, you know, a, a dog biting me and then obviously that leads to, to obviously some kind of infection? If it's monkeypox, would it be like an animal or a bat having to... What, what happens? Is it within the, um, you know, the, the feces of the bat? How, what must actually happen with the animal in order for it to have transfer to the human? How does that happen? 
So for monkeypox, um, I don't think we know exactly how it's uh, transmitted in, in the wild. It's uh, probably from a rodent um, reservoir where it uh, lives, then moves into other animals, um, squirrels, non-human primates, um, other rodents, and then people catch them for food and they're infected, the animals are infected, and there's very close contact, uh, often through a cut or an abrasion in the skin, um, and the animal is infected. And that's how, how the virus in the case of monkeypox uh, would infect somebody. In the case of humans who are infected with monkeypox, it's very close contact with uh, lesions, usually skin lesions. Um, in the case of Ebola, we don't know the reservoir. We don't know where it is in, in the wild. It might be bats. And then uh, bats may infect uh, um, gorillas or other non-human primates. People go into the forest to uh, harvest bush meat. Um, they may butcher the, the gorilla. It's really a dreadful trade, I'm afraid. Um, and uh, they get infected if that animal is infected. In the same way, it's uh, close contact with blood and body fluids. 63% in the last decade is an alarming increase, stock of these uh, transmissions. Is. How far are we from figuring out how to curb this, this rise? Well, as I mentioned, the, uh, the One Health approach, we all need to work together, um, human, environmental, and uh, animal health specialists can't just uh, address it on the human side. So I think it's to determine how exactly many of these diseases are, are transmitted, where exactly they come from. Ebola, we think it's bats, but we don't know for sure. Um, you know, bushmeat is, is, uh, is a very important uh, local, um, it's very important local consumption in areas. But once you, know, you have trade nationally or internationally, um, that, that's a problem. We absolutely need to address that. And then I think it's looking at countermeasures. If you look at the human side, you know, looking at um, uh, very good diagnostics that can be used to uh, determine when species has jumped into somebody and diagnose it more locally, um, looking at vaccines, looking at medication to, to treat patients. But it must be a one health approach. We can't just address this on the human side. Yeah. You know, as you're speaking about even finding vaccines, what I think more than anything else we've seen with COVID-19 is that we, if we actually band together, we are able to come up with a solution in no time. Mm. And speaking about COVID, where is, where is, is the origin still confirmed that it actually does come from an animal? So I think the search is still on for the origin of, of uh, SARS-CoV-2. It's likely to be an animal, how it jumped, or which specific animal is not clear at this moment. And uh, I think that's uh, ongoing work. Important to inform, you know, I think zoonoses in general. Professor, we speak about um, banding together to find solutions and find them quicker. But is there any will from particularly the, you know, uh, first world nations, the Americas, the Londons, and, and those who do have these resources to make sure that these solutions are found quicker. Is there any will to make sure that these uh, solutions are found quicker? And I ask this question considering that, you know, the, the release or the sharing of COVID-19 vaccines was quite a bit of an issue and still is an issue. Monkeypox, you know, it's also coming into that, into that discussion that vaccines for monkeypox are being withheld by the, the first world nations. So is there really any will from the world at large, especially those with the power to do so, to find solutions to these problems? So, you know, you raise a, a very critical point. Equity is absolutely essential um, to address. And there are you know, ongoing issues, particularly with monkeypox vaccine. You know, monkeypox has been um, an issue in, in Africa for many years. Now that it's uh, spread to, to um, countries outside of Africa, there's a lot of effort to, um, to produce vaccines, but they haven't reached Africa. Um, so, you know, I think there's, um, there's a lot of work still to be done there. Um, but there's, if you look at um, One Health efforts, um, I think Ebola really paved the way. Ebola, many outbreaks in Africa, really no treatment, no vaccines. But in, 20, in the 2013 to 2016 outbreak, uh, vaccines were taken off the shelves in uh, research labs and um, taken further, developed. Um, they were um, 
uh, developed through a lot of uh, different funding. And now we have uh, um, vaccines that are, have been used in subsequent um, outbreaks to curtail the, the outbreaks very quickly. So I think things are changing and people are seeing the world as interconnected and what happens uh, in Africa may well be, become a problem in other countries. So, you know, I think uh, uh, providing these resources and doing things to um, ensure that everyone has access is absolutely critical. But yes, still lots of work needed there. We'll have to leave it there. Professor Lucille, thank you very much for your time this morning. Professor Lucille Bloomberg is from the University of Pretoria.